Let's talk about price gouging, and I'm going to give you some good points when you're arguing this topic with somebody. Price gouging is a term that's given to uh, somebody that is going to buy something at a lower cost and then because of economic conditions is going to sell it for a much higher cost. And a, a typical example of this would be somebody that uh, uh, there's a, a hurricane in Florida and so this person goes down from, from somewhere north of there from Kentucky, buys a, a trailer full of uh, bottled water and or generators and from Home Depot, he's buying the generators for 500 bucks each and the bottled water for a dollar a bottle and then drives down to Florida, books it overnight. He and his buddy take turns driving and they go down to this horrible horribly wrecked area and then they try to sell the bottles of water for five bucks each and the generators for twenty five hundred dollars each and there are federal laws and, and I'm this is in the US that there are laws against this. This is not some other you know, fascist country that you might expect this, but in the United States, there are laws that say that you may not do that. And so I'm not gonna talk about it from the legal standpoint, I'm gonna talk about it from the economic common sense standpoint. So here's how, here's how I see this. This person that drives down with the bottles of water and the generators, why are they doing it? What prompts them to say, hey, I'm gonna, call into work and see if I can take three days off and drive down and, and do this. Is it because they want to help people? I would argue that that's part of it. Uh, is it that they want to make money? I would definitely argue that that's part of it. I would do it for that reason and to help people, but yeah, it's primarily to make money. Um, nothing wrong with that, obviously. So if the person's goal is to make money, how much money do they need to make in order to make it worth renting the trailer, paying for the gas, paying for the hotel, being away from work, hurting the reputation with their boss, their time driving, their buddy's time driving, etc. So when you add it all up, let's just say that it was gonna cost 2,000 bucks for them to make the trip. How much profit is it okay that they make on top of that? How much do you think it's okay, just from a moral perspective? Is there a set limit? That's what the person has to consider. They have to say to themselves, how much money am I gonna make if I do this? If I go to all this hassle and I invest $2,000 that I could completely lose, I could wreck on the way down, all kinds of things could happen. What, what if the Mennonites or the Mormons or some rescue group like that that's very efficient or even one that's inefficient like uh, FEMA or somebody like that would show up ahead of time and just distribute everything for free? What if that happens? Then you're out all the money. So there's some risk involved. So if you could only earn $1, for doing this for the weekend. Is it worth the huge risk and going through the hassle? And I think we would agree that it's probably not worth it for a dollar. Unless, now if you had the time off anyway, you're looking for something to do, you want to help people, and hey, if I can just cover costs, more power to you. Please do that. That is awesome. If that's not the case though and you want to make money, let's say you have to make money, your mortgage is due, your kids need braces, let's think about what it would be worth it. What if you could for that weekend you're used to making 50 grand a year, and you could, in one weekend, you could make $10,000. Would that give you the oomph, the push to do this? Probably so. 25 grand definitely would give you the push. But you have to kind of calculate it, and let's say that you come to the number of, hey, it's gonna cost me two grand, and I'm gonna clear two grand, and that will help pay for the braces, for two years worth of braces payments, or whatever for your kid. Whatever it is you decide. If that was less than 2,000, if it was 1,000 is all you would make, or 1,500, you'd decide to just stick it out, stay at your job, work there, maybe work a little bit of overtime, and you would not make that trip. Is that accurate? I would say that's, can't really be argued, that that's, that's what's driving you. Now, what happens when you arrive down in Florida? You and your buddy, you've gone to Home Depot and purchased the, uh, the generators, you've gone to the <clears throat> Dollar Tree or whatever, and you've purchased your bottles of water, and hopefully you got them at a better deal. You've driven down there, and you arrive at the edge of the disaster zone. And you have all this water, and you look, and you see a little stand set up beside the road, and the people are selling bottled water for $2 a bottle. Because 
Truth is, if you drive just a few miles more, you can get it for $1.50. So they've marked it up a little bit because they're closer to the disaster zone. But you keep driving, and you get in closer and closer, and now you're the heart of it. And you see people are selling bottled water for 10 bucks a bottle, because that's how desperate people are. If you then sell it for $5 a bottle, or $10 a bottle, or $9.99 a bottle, aren't you providing a valuable service? Why shouldn't you be able to sell it for that price? What price would make it ethical, moral for you to sell it? Is there a certain dollar amount? Is there a certain percentage? Should I first calculate the estimated amount you'll be able to sell and then the risk? And is there some formula that, okay, well, you can't sell it for 10 bucks a bottle or five bucks a bottle, but you can sell it for $1.33 a bottle. You can't come up with a number like that. I can't come up with a number like that, and the government sure as hell can't come up with a number like that. You know who can? You know what can? The market. The free market can come up with the perfect number of what it's worth to the person that's thirsty and what it's worth to the entrepreneur that took the risk to bring the water down. So what is the perfect cost? Who knows? Evidently, right now it's $10. I'll bet you if you set yours up and start selling them for $9, the other person's going to come down to $8.50. And then the price is going to work its way down. If all of a sudden the Mennonites show up and they have a trailer full of water and they're saying, no, we don't want money. This is covered in our fund and we actually had it shipped here. The Mormons loaned us one of their jets and we just had it shipped in and, and it was all donated by people who couldn't be here to help in person but wanted to help. And no, here, take all the free water you want. Now the market has proven that I shouldn't be charging $5 a bottle or $10 a bottle. Now the market has shown that that area has a better solution for getting water to people. What am I going to do? What's my little competitor over here charging 10 bucks a bottle? What are we going to do? We're going to drive a mile or two down the road until we see an area where the Mennonites aren't, FEMA isn't, and there is no tough competition that's selling it for lower prices. We're going to look for a place where we can still get three, four, five, six, seven bucks a bottle for our water. And we're going to sell it there until a better option shows up. Now picture the absolute lunacy, the how stupid a person would have to be to think that it's okay for me to move to this new location and I'm selling bottles of water for $3.50 because that's what the market has decided, uh, decided it can handle. And then thirsty people who are desperate are coming over and they're paying $3.50 a bottle and they're walking away happy and now they're hydrated and I'm walking away happy because I get to pay for my kids' medical braces. Everybody's happy and then all of a sudden some third party shows up and says, no, you can't sell that water to them for that price. You're gouging. You need to get a city license, and anyway, you shouldn't be doing it even with that. This is FEMA's thing. You need to leave, and we're going to confiscate your money. What should I do then? Should I go after that person who's drinking, or, or they're giving it to their daughter, and their daughter's drinking this bottle of water? Should I go and just knock it out of her hand and say, quit that? Or should they continue drinking it? Should I give my money to the government, to this third party that comes in and tells me not to? Um, what if they don't even have a solution for it? Now this family says, well, you just knocked the bottle of water out of my kid's hand. You gave me my money back, but my kid's thirsty. Where am I going to get water? And the government's standing there saying, well, that's something that FEMA is going to take care of. Well, where are they? If they were there, you wouldn't have just paid me $3.50 for this bottle of water. The only reason you paid it is because they weren't there. Does all of this make sense? Is there any, any reason that bottles of water or generators should be, have a price set and a prohibition from entrepreneurs coming and selling them in disaster zones? And we'll just keep this simple. If you have a good logical argument based in sound macroeconomics, reason, uh, it's, an, it's an intelligent argument, I want to hear it. Please make that argument. I don't think you're going to have one that meets that criteria. If you do, I would love to either change my mind if you provide me with new information or defeat the heck out of you in a fun, lively debate. Just we'll go back and forth online. If you can think of any reason generators, bottles of water 
should not be sold by a couple dudes from Kentucky that drive down to Florida right after a hurricane. If you can come up with any reason that that's a bad idea or that those people are bad or it's not good for everybody in the long run, if you can think of a single reason or and a better solution, please write it below. I'm saying you can't.